time when he lost to Mayweather uh, to get rid of the evidence. One question surrounding tonight's bout. Will he actually try to box or will he throw himself at Pacquiao and try to establish physical advantages early? And now here comes Blue Moon. Hatton's crowd relatively reserved tonight. Seemingly thrown off a little bit by him entering first and the absence of Blue Moon except as a bit of an encore. And now the Filipino crowd gets ready for Manny Pacquiao who shows the happiness that always seems to envelop him. Amid his chaotic life, Emmanuel, he never seems anything other than totally joyful at being Manny Pacquiao. He loves people. He loves boxing, fighting, the excitement that goes with it, the adulation, the crowd. He was born to be a prize fighter. Neither one of these fighters walks to the ring like they think it's the last mile. It's, no matter how many times they do it, it's like the first mile. Among other things, they're going to each make a minimum of $12 million, which would put a smile on anyone's face. Coming to the ring from the Philippines, the Pac-Man. Just over Pacquiao's right shoulder, Michael Moore, one-time heavyweight champion of the world, and now the apparently anointed inheritor somewhere down the road to Freddie Roach's training operation. Yeah, he's done a great job. Seem to have a good temperature between the three of them. And there's Freddie from behind, making himself almost inconspicuous <laughs> somewhere in the Pacquiao entourage. So much of the buildup to the fight has centered on the two trainers. For his part, Roach was visibly relieved after the weigh-in yesterday, saying, okay, from now on, it's about the fighters. Thank heaven for that. Well, we have two non-American fighters, two American trainers, three American judges. And the trainers have been the uh, subplot, and they've, they've made it even bigger than anybody anticipated. One big credit hanging over the fight for Pacquiao. How much credit truly does he deserve for his conquest of De La Hoya? Did it prove that he could beat a quality bigger man? Or did it prove only that he could batter the shell of what once was De La Hoya? Let's go to Michael Buffer now for the official introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated and Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions in association with MP Promotions and Hatton Promotions are proud to present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBO and Ring Magazine Light Welterweight Championship of the World. Sponsored by Rockstar, party like a rock star. Tecate, cerveza con carácter. Southwest Airlines, low fares, no hidden fees, and smart communications. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Bill Brady, Executive Director Keith Kaiser, IBO President Ed Levine. At ringside, the three judges scoring this bout, Michael Pernick. C.J. Ross and Glenn Trowbridge. And inside the ring, your referee in charge of the action at the bell, Kenny Bayless. And now, with their places secured in the Hall of Fame, only one can become victorious tonight. So from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching, 
around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Fighting out of the blue corner with his head trainer, Floyd Mayweather Sr., wearing black with white and silver. Official weight, 140 pounds. Professional record, 46 fights. 45 victories, including 32 knockouts with only one defeat. From Manchester, England, the three-time world champion and reigning defending IBO Ring Magazine Light Welterweight Champion of the World, Ricky Hitman Hunter. Well, let's go. And fighting out of the red corner with head trainer Freddie Roach, wearing white with blue, officially weighing 138 pounds. Professional record, 53 fights, 48 victories, including 36 knockouts, three defeats and two draws. From Sarangani Province, Philippines, the five-time world champion, currently recognized as pound for pound, the best fighter in the world, Manny Pac-Man. Okay, gentlemen, trunks are okay here. Trunks are okay here. Now, gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution you to keep the fight clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck. Touch up. They are warrior kings with armies of fans who follow them to the battle. Now, they will be alone in the battle. After a long publicity tour and a lot of exposure to each other, they are genuinely friendly. They like each other. It should not show up in the fight. No. Question one, is round one a boxing match? Or does Hatton want to fight right away? No, what Ricky is doing is what, what the, you know, the keys of victory, which we didn't have a chance to show to the audience, was for him to create anxiety and pressure on Ma Manny, unlike anybody else has ever did before. But you have to watch Manny, because Manny is still the better puncher between the two, so he still must be a little careful. So Hatton wants to apply pressure, but with care, yes, with against care. Pacquiao's faster yes. hands. Yes. And I think he's doing just that. Hard right hand by Pacquiao. Trying to hit Hatton as he comes in. Key element of the game plan for Pacquiao. Allow Hatton to come forward, catch him on the way in. A key element of the game plan for Hatton, get Pacquiao against the ropes, just like that. Pacquiao has been more successful with the right than the left. That, that, that punch missed. There's the right again landing. Quick right yes. hooks are landing for Pacquiao. The left hand is overshooting the target. This fight is living up to the anxiety that the fans expected and in intensity. It's going to be an important factor to see how Kitty Bayless handles this fight because it could be exciting and it could end up being a very wrestling type match also. Great right hand for Hatton blazed across the face and of Pacquiao. Hatton's Pac face Pac is already red. I thought Pacquiao landed the right hook. 
Well, I think Pacquiao's landed three significant right hooks already in the fight, Emmanuel. It's definitely been his best punch early. Straight jab lands for Pacquiao. Which again shows that he's no longer a one punch puncher. Nope, follows the jab with a hook, comes back with another jab. There's the straight left hand, and he landed it right on Hatton's chin. And down goes Hatton after he swings and misses with a left hook. And that's a knockdown for Manny Pacquiao. Perfect right hand inside. I don't know if Vicky's going to survive. I, you know, I'm surprised to see him get hurt for Shelly. But you know, he's not the type of a guy that goes out of survive. He's a fighter. Hatton got a couple of extra seconds as Bayless tried to back Pacquiao off. Pacquiao was coming out of the neutral corner in a hurry. Lands another right hook. Pacquiao's hands are so back. Pacquiao's hands are blindingly fast. His hands are so fast that no opponent sees the punches coming. A very another perfect up. right hand for Pacquiao. Another right hook. Straight left hand. Pacquiao's landing at will. Hard left hand. Hatton has to hold on. Will Hatton make it out of the round? He's down for the second time. This is the brilliance of the Filipino slugger. A tsunami for Manny Pacquiao in round one. Kevin, he never saw it. And what's amazing, to see him land a punch and then slip a punch all at the same time shows unbelievable coordination. The issue has always and been timing. whether Hatton could get to Pacquiao and avoid these kinds of clean punches. box numbers in round one, utterly devastating to Pacquiao's chances. Pacquiao is 35 out of 62. 31 out of 52 power shots. Hatton only 8 out of 33. It was a Pacquiao storm in the first round. This, and we have to remember now, although it's a different type of fight, that Pacquiao knocked Marquez down three times in the first round. And then Marquez, a counterpuncher, began to solve him. Hatton is not a counterpuncher. Hard left hand by Hatton. Ricky has decided to fight fire with fire. And what he's going to have to do in this case, Sherry, he just is trying to smother this guy and get close. He's trying to punch at a certain distance. Pacquiao is actually just too sharp and accurate a punching. You heard Floyd Mayweather saying to Hatton, you can't just jump all over him. You've got to move your head. You've got to think. You've got to do the things we talked about in training camp. Hatton seemed to believe that he could physically overpower Pacquiao from the beginning. Yeah, and he, and he knew in the beginning he was going to take the risk of getting caught, and he did. Because, you know, coming in, Pacquiao still is the puncher. The physical strength is still with Hatton, but the, the, the puncher is still Pacquiao. Hard left hand by Pacquiao. Stunned Hatton and knocked him back. Look at the brilliant accuracy of Manny Pacquiao. Landing with both right and left hands. Misses the right hook there. What Ricky needs to do is to smother him. He cannot see to deal with those punches. He needs to push him. Just what he's doing there. Good left hook inside by Hatton. And then he closed down Pacquiao's left side. Hard right hand again by Pacquiao. Ricky can't see the hook coming. Right behind the head. All right, okay. Kenny Bayless warns Hatton for holding behind the head. In Hatton's most famous victory over Costa Zoo, he just smothered him and didn't allow him to get off. He can't seem to be able to get close enough to Pacquiao often enough to do that. And Costa Pacquiao's Zou. hands are so quick. That's the point. Costa Zoo had about a quarter of the speed of Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's, Pacquiao's blinding speed that sets him apart. As well as his head movement. His head movement is just a phenomenal. I don't think he's landed too much out of that exchange, but it just is. Ability to punch, maintain balance, which he used to couldn't do. 
And his head hit for him just too difficult for Patton to time. I think Pacquiao may have spent the first two minutes of this round thinking knockout and allowed himself to get a little wild. Now he goes back to more precision. Yeah, lands but, a hard body shot. But Ricky isn't moving his head too much still. Uh, his head is still right there. That is. Oh, oh my gosh, what a straight left hand. And will Hatton make it up from this? Can he beat the count? Is that it? And Kenny Miller says, no way. That is that. What an amazing knockout shot. That is the most spectacular one-punch shot of Manny Pacquiao's incredible career. Any fighter. And I'm not sure if they're doing the right thing by moving Hatton around. I'm not a medical guy, but he's in very bad straight bad stitch. Shape. Once Pacquiao stopped thinking knockout and went back to boxing, yes. then he got the knockout. He timed him just right. Timed with a perfect left hand shot as he's coming in. Landing 34 of his last 53 power shots, 64%. And you know, Jim, the interesting thing is, before this fight tonight, he had shown this kind of power against the best featherweights, Barrera, Morales. And Take a look at this. Take a look at this. This is a perfect time. That was super slow yeah, motion. Yeah, and he never saw a time him coming in. Yeah. It's the first time he's knocked out somebody like this since he was at 130 pounds. And Hatton's head hit the canvas very hard. He was knocked out as soon as Double the punch landed. Double jeopardy. He was unconscious from the moment he caught that shot. Goes to the canvas in the proverbial heap. And boom. Out of our camera range at that angle, the head pounded against the canvas. Here's another look. So Floyd Mayweather made his statement on a podium this morning, saying, I'm back and I'm still the best. Manny Pacquiao makes his statement right here in the ring, he knocking a... out Ricky Hatton. And his trainer, Freddie Roach, had predicted it would not go past three rounds. Carol Hatton is sitting down. Ray Hatton is standing up in the white shirt, looking away at the left corner of your screen. That's the Hatton family area in the crowd. They're hoping that their son is going to be all right. That's Hatton's fiance, Jennifer, in the red dress. And you can see the emotion on her face at this very moment. There's Ricky. And as we look at Ricky, we'll go up to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, from the MGM Grand of Las Vegas, the end comes at two minutes 59 seconds round number two the winner by tko victory and now the new ibo and ring magazine late welterweight champion of the world and still pound for pound the best in the world manny gotten the best of Ricky Hatton in his 47 fight career both of them knocked him out Floyd Mayweather in 10 rounds Manny Pacquiao in two and all credit to Pacquiao's trainer Freddie Roach who was angry about the publicity angry at everything that Hatton's trainer said about him and said my man will knock out Ricky Hatton within three rounds he did it. 73 landed punches for Pacquiao out of 127 thrown. In other words, he practically couldn't miss. 
18 out of 78 for Hatton, who was still scratching and sniffing and looking for some way to be in the fight at the moment when the end came. An amazing display of speed and skill. But it was, his punches were so accurate. He was punching, slipping, ducking, and punching. A, I don't recall ever seeing a fight of that sharp that was doing offense and defensive at the same time. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Jim. Congra congratulations, Manny. Were you surprised how this fight went? Um, I mean, uh, I'm surprised that um, the fight is, uh, is kind of easy, but for me, I consider the fight is, is hard because he, 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 he can punch. He has a strong um, left hand. All right, let's take a look at the knockout, and you describe what were you thinking at the time? Did you know that one punch could finish him? Describe it. Um, that's what our, uh, our strategy, the one punch, hook by hook, um, left hook and right hook that's going to be the key of the, this fight all right but going back into the first round it was your right hook that was doing the damage yeah um i mean the the first round is uh i expected my hook my right hook is going to be uh dangerous for him because uh he's open while he's uh coming forward and his has, hands is down so you think he was trying to avoid your left hand which is usually your power hand that's right that's right but he's, he's very surprised because i have a i, I have a new techniques the right hook Alex, ready. because you got the best training in the world you got the, the best training <laughs> do you feel that a fighter who comes to you this way and tries to get to you inevitably you're going to be able to impose your power on him. I mean, I mean, sir, like what I said, I'm always doing my job in the ring and uh, do my best to make people happy. And like, right, like this, like this fight, and you know, uh, nothing personal for me. It's uh, I'm just doing my job. All right. Speaking of doing a job, let's go back to the first round and take a look at the knockdowns and describe them. The first knockdown. Yeah, th that's the right hook. We, we study that every day in, in the gym. Uh, we study that every day in the gym. If you see the 24-7, I mean, I throw a lot of hooks in the training. So that's why he's very surprised on that, on that uh, style. Is this fight as satisfying to you as your victory over Oscar De La Hoya? I mean, um, I'm satisfied. I mean, uh, you know, uh, nothing personal. I'm just doing my job. In, I mean, I'm always uh, uh, trying my best in the ring, you know, to give more impression to the people. All right, we all know that Floyd Mayweather Jr. is coming back. He's going to be fighting a fighter you had really tough fights with, Marquez. If he wins that fight, is that a fight you want, you and Mayweather? Well, uh, I can fight anybody, you know. Um, it depends on how my promoters are negotiating, sir. And, and I'm just fighter and doing my job training and keep keep 100 percent in the, in, the, in that fight. All right, thank you very much again for a great fight. Thank you, sir, and I hope everybody happy. Thank you very much to all to all of you guys who coming here tonight. Thank you. Manny being Manny, 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 and this is Freddie Roach being Freddie Roach. You predicted a third round knockout. I don't think we're going to hold it against you that you were wrong by a round. Why did you make that prediction? And what did you see happening in this fight that was going to make it come true? Well, every time Ricky throws his left hand, he pulls it back and cocks it. And he's wide open for a short right hook on the inside from the southpaw stance. And we worked on that every day in the gym, the timing shot. And it just worked beautiful. Did you know after that first round that, OK, now it's going to happen any time it's going to be over? Or did you think that, uh, he's, that Hatton still had the, the strength to make it a longer fight. No, I knew it was over because Ricky doesn't have the ability, it seems like, to adjust. He fights the same way over and over again. I've watched tapes of him for the last two and a half months. I know him pretty well. What do you think about the possibility of Manny fighting Mayweather should Mayweather beat Marquez in July? Um, I think it's a very good possibility. It's a fight that if the fans want to see it. I think everyone, it's a natural fight out there. The two best fighters in the world. I think it'd be a great fight. Thank you very much, Thank Freddie. You. Jim? Thank you very much. And by the way, 
one of the stories which surrounds Manny Pacquiao, visible there, and that is that Freddie Roach's battle with Parkinson's ongoing uh, is probably getting more difficult. That's one of the reasons Michael Moore has been brought in to help train Freddie, uh, or help Freddie train Manny Pacquiao. But what an amazing marriage Pacquiao and Roach have forged, and it was visible in the way he used all of his techniques to be yeah. that new. You know, this is this is Freddie Roach's signature fight. You know, everybody has the one fighter that you identified with. I've punched and I've had three with, between Thomas Hearns and Lennox and now Klitschko. But the chemistry between them is just fantastic.